How old is the shop? Actually, our restaurant since 1840. 1840. And I'm five generation, yeah. Five generations. Yeah. Welcome to Chopstick Travel. I'm Luke Martin and today I'm in Turkey. In this episode, I'm going to be taking you for a traditional village style Turkish breakfast, exploring the ruins of an ancient Lycian civilization and also heading to the city of Afyon Karahisar, a rather unknown city in central Turkey to take you for one of the oldest, if not the oldest kebab in all of Turkey. It's gonna be a great episode, so make sure you stay tuned until the end. Let's go eat some Turkish food. This restaurant is absolutely massive. When you arrive, they ask you, do you want a table or a house? So you can choose to sit at the tables or you can choose to sit in a little house that they've built here. Some are up on stilts and they're kind of traditional Turkish style. Gonna sit in my little house and uh, get the breakfast. Turkish breakfast is more than a meal, it's an entire event. He comes and he just starts putting plates down and when you think he's finished, he's not even halfway done. They keep coming, they keep coming. There's so many things on the table. The only thing I can compare it to is like a Korean banchan, the side dishes. The table is just absolutely packed full of different things. I'm gonna do my best to introduce everything. We've got several types of eggs. This is eggs with kavramali, which is a, a braised beef. Here is the famous menemen, so eggs with uh, tomatoes and veggies, onions in there. This is sujuk Turkish beef sausage, spicy sausage fried. This is just uh, regular scrambled eggs. Got some french fries here. This looks like one type of cheese. I think this is rose jam back here. I'm not exactly sure this one. It looks like fig jam. This is either cheese or butter, uh, honey. Oh, I think this one's actually butter here. This is gonna be like tahini, I believe. I'm not sure about this one. We've got two types of olives, green and black olives. Another jam, probably strawberry. This is a Turkish red pepper and tomato paste. This, I believe, is like a type of walnut uh, spread. Some dried um, prunes back here. And then a couple more types of cheeses back here. And then a little bit of yogurt. Uh, something else right here and then this one is some walnuts that haven't even been cracked yet so fresh walnuts you can see them in there oh they look like good ones too and then a nice uh, spread of veggies my favorite kaimak with honey and topped with walnuts and then bread and that's it there's only what one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four twenty five twenty six twenty seven twenty 29 things if I didn't miss one. Wow. They give you an entire pot of tea. So the top one has the chai in it. So go uh, easy because it's super strong. And then the bottom one is just hot water. So you kind of cut it so it's not too strong. This one certainly catches my eye. The cavern molly with uh, eggs. So braised beef with eggs. Mm. Soft, soft eggs with really tender meat. It's quite salty too. Yum, that's good. Next up, world famous Turkish menemen. Mm. Yeah, that's one of my all time favorite Turkish dishes with all those fresh tomatoes in there. There's some green peppers as well. Chase that menemen with a little sizu. Mm. Mm. That's got a really unique flavor. It's packed full of spices. You can taste some cumin in there for sure. It's not spicy, but it also has a unique dried texture. Yum. All right, Kaimek, my all-time favorite Turkish breakfast item. It's the top cream, clotted cream, and this one's got walnuts and honey on it. It's just such a natural dairy flavor, and then sweetness from the honey, a little bit of a crunch from the walnut. So there are six different things of cheese, if this is not 
butter, I don't think. No, these are cheeses as well. So these ones are almost like little mozzarella, I recognize. This one is gonna have some green onions in it. I'll, I think I'll go for this one, which is probably a sheep's cheese, and it's gonna be a little strong, I expect. Super strong. You can taste that sheep for sure. And then a little bit of onion flavor in there. Very salty. Chase that with a little bit of eggs. Oh man, that's really salty. Mm. I love the mixing and matching. Chase something really salty like that cheese with some sweet jam, like this rose jam. Mm. Wow, tastes exactly like rose water. Super strong rose essence in there. Turkish walnuts are world famous, really high quality, and you can see that this one's got this nice white color to it. Honestly, if you eat this at like 10, 30, 11, you're not gonna be hungry probably until at least dinner, maybe for the entire day. Mm. I love it. One of my favorite things to do in Turkey. I always do feel a little bit bad after a Turkish breakfast because there's no way you're ever gonna finish everything on the plate. And most places, if you do finish it, they come and refill it, so it's never ending. I'm about two and a half hours outside of Antalya city to the ancient city of Myra. This is one of many archeological sites and uh, ancient cities here in Turkey, especially in the south of Turkey. This is a Lycian city and I'm just checking out these kind of creepy looking faces right here. There's also a big theater and some ruins in the side of the mountain. So I'm gonna go around and explore a little bit. Definitely something you're gonna wanna do in the south of Turkey is come check out some of these ancient to the cities. So behind me, built right into the side of this cliff face are some rock graves. And I'm definitely not a historian, but I was just reading off the signboard that uh, these date back to the fourth century BC. There's 23 of them. 10 of them are Lycian graves, and then 13 of them are actually ancient Greeks. So this city was controlled not only by the Lycians, but also by the Greeks. There are definitely not as many tourists as you'll find at other ancient sites around Antalya here at the city of Myra, and it's 70 lira to come into the uh, ancient city of Myra. I think it's worth it. This is really beautiful, really cool. So I've come up to the top of the theater now. These things are absolutely huge. You can find them all around Turkey in different conditions. This one I'd say is like pretty good condition but also feels very uh, old obviously. It's remarkable that they could even build this thing over 2,000 years ago and this would have been like the entertainment, only entertainment in town would have been happening right here. This theater, really beautiful. It is smoking hot here in the south of Turkey in June and I think this theater is quite unique because it's actually built right into the side of the mountain. I'm not sure there's too many that are like that here in Turkey. Definitely uh, recommend checking out the ancient city of Myra. So I've just made it to the city of Afyon Karahisar, or otherwise known as just Afyon. This is not necessarily a popular destination in Turkey. It's kind of a transit hub, but I wanted to stop here today because there's uh, one restaurant in particular that I'm looking forward to trying, I'm really looking forward to it. So that's where I'm going first thing, just arrived. Let's go get uh, a kebab. How old is the shop? Actually, our restaurant is 1840. 1840. I'm five generations, 
so I'm inside the shop. The reason that I came here to Affion is this restaurant. It has been around since 1840, making it one of the oldest restaurants in all of Turkey. It is currently in its fifth generation, and they only serve uh, two items. One is the kebab, and one is dessert. So it's cooked in this big vat of oil, and then it's served with some rice and some bread, and he dunks the bread right in the oil as well. And this recipe is almost two centuries old. They've just been serving this, so you know it's gotta be good. Without even tasting it, I can tell it's gonna be so ridiculously tender. There's pieces of fat in there. It's served with some rice, like almost like a pilaf. I can see a little bit of carrots in there. Since 1840, I'm so excited to try this. That is like next level tender and it's such a subtle natural flavor. You can just taste that lamb. It's not gamey at all, but it's got a really fresh lamb flavor. Let's try it with a little bit of some of this bread that he kind of dunked in the meat juices. Make a little bite there, a little sandwich. To say that melts in your mouth is a total understatement. It totally liquefies and so full of flavor. Look at, there's a big chunk of fat here attached to some of the meat. Pulls apart like absolutely nothing. Almost 200 year old recipe. Can you believe that? That's crazy. They've just been serving this one thing for almost two centuries. That's, that's crazy. It's so good. The fat is so good. The atmosphere in this restaurant is just a feeling of nostalgia. Just feel the history in here. And the kebab is just to die for. These chairs and tables have been around since the original inception of the restaurant. And there's only six of them in here. That did not last long at all. Just imagine five generations. Imagine your father, your grandfather, your great-grandfather, and your great-great-grandfather all eating at the same restaurant. That's how much history is here. You can just feel it sitting in here. I love it. Let's try their dessert next. This is the dessert. It's called Kadaif Ekmek, so uh, Kadaif bread, and then it's topped with a big thing of buffalo cream, uh, Kaimek, and it's basically just bread that's been soaked in sugar, and this has been served alongside their kebab for almost 200 years. Look at that. <laughs> that is rich. Oh man. If you were a sweet tooth, you're gonna fall in love with that. Wow, at least there's a little bit of Kaimek on top to balance it out because that is seriously sweet. It's it's honey though, so it feels like a nice sweetness, not like a refined white sugar or something. But wow, that is rich. I love it though. <laughs> oh man, that is addictive. Whoa. Mm. It's fully saturated with honey. And really rich, creamy kadai and really rich, creamy kind back on top. Yum. I just wanted to clarify a little bit. The owner was just explaining to me about the tables. So the table I'm sitting on here is since 1923, and then the three tables over there are since 1840, and the chairs are new since 1967. He just showed me the bottom of the chair. It says 1967 on it, and what an experience to just dine on a table that has been uh, dined on for almost 200 years. Not many places you can do that in the world, that's for sure. Ooh, that is rich. That was an experience of a lifetime. That might be my favorite restaurant in the entire world. The food is delicious and the history is just absolutely incredible. And the owner was so ridiculously friendly. Fifth generation, he took me out back, gave me some Turkish coffee, he wouldn't let me pay, and he even offered uh, for me to spend the night at his house here in Afyon. I do already have a hotel booking, so I couldn't take him up on the offer, but just so friendly, so delicious food, and what an experience. Afyon's definitely out of the way, but I'd recommend if you want to have one of the best kebabs of your entire life and feel the history here, you got to come to this spot. The information's down in the description box.
Afyon feels like a very traditional Turkish city. You can really see the real way of life of uh, the Turks and feel the history once again walking these cobblestone streets. Really beautiful views of the castle up on top of this hill in the distance and all the old ancient buildings. I love it. popped into this really cool open space. It's like a shopping center, but also like these little cafes all scattered around for a classic cup of chai. I love the atmosphere in these traditional Turkish cities. It reminds me of Gaziantep here in Afyon. I totally recommend you to check out a lesser popular city on your trip to Turkey. All right, guys, that's it for today's episode. Another incredible day of eating here in Turkey and exploring beautiful ancient ruins. I really had a lot of fun in this episode. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the bell icon so you're notified when I post the next episode from Turkey. I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.